Hello grade 11s and welcome to this lesson on Charles's law. Nelly starts with some history. Jacques Charles was a French physicist and pioneer balloonist. He proposed that hot air balloons rise into the air because the volume that a fixed mass of gas occupies at atmospheric pressure increases with increasing temperature, making the gas less dense. In 1787, he did experiments to show a simple mathematical relationship between the volume of gases and their temperatures. This, of course, helped him to calculate exactly how much he needed to heat the gas in his hot air balloon to stay up in the air. Thanks, Nelly. In this lesson, we answer the focus question. How does the temperature of a gas affect its volume? So we need to change the temperature of a trapped gas and measure the resulting volume of this gas. For this test to be fair, we must keep the pressure and amount of gas we use constant. If we think about our everyday lives, we can already answer this question to an extent. For example, have you noticed that if you walk a lot, especially on a hot day, your feet swell and your shoes feel tight? We know that heating makes things expand. The same applies to gases. As we increase a gas's temperature, it expands, so its volume increases. In this lesson, we join Mr. Mashapa and his learners as they collect data to determine if this relationship is, in fact, direct proportion. The learners trap a gas in a sealed syringe to control for amount of gas. They keep the air in their syringes at atmospheric pressure to control for pressure. So they need to seal in their gas at atmospheric pressure. Tabi Singh explains how to do this. Then we join Nelly as she talks to us through the demonstrations. You first take the syringe and you put the, the nylon inside. There must be a little piece left outside and you take this plunger. You must hold the nylon which is lying outside. And then when you push this plunger, you must hear some air uh, escaping the gas. You must hold it. And then we're going to place this. And then we pull this nylon outside. So to see that it is in the atmospheric pressure, you must push it. It must go back to the, uh, the same point where it was. Notice that we once again have two sets of apparatus. Group 2 and 3 have a single sealed syringe, while Group 1 has a system consisting of two syringes that are connected with a plastic tube. Why do you think this is? Well, although two groups were given sealed syringes, the syringes may still leak some air causing experimental errors. Having the two syringe system should prevent any gas from escaping and give a control to test the other two groups results against. Although the apparatus are slightly different, the aim of the experiments is the same. In each case, the syringe or system should be set to contain a specific mass of gas, as Ntabi Seng explained. Then the syringes are placed into beakers and the temperature of the gas is changed by submerging it into ice, tap water, warm water and hot water. The learners have been instructed to record the temperature readings as well as the corresponding volume readings. Do we use the temperature for um, uh, degrees or kelvins? Yeah, thank you for that. The temperature should be in kelvins. You use the kelvin temperature. In science, we measure temperature in kelvin, not degrees Celsius. This is because a gas's temperature in kelvin is directly proportional to the kinetic energy of its molecules. This is not so for degrees Celsius. In another lesson, we saw that a gas's pressure is directly proportional to its temperature in Kelvin. One of the ways we recognize direct proportion in is that one variable divided by the other gives a constant. 
Let's join the class as they report back on whether they got a constant for volume divided by temperature. You check on your ratio, check what do you realize from what you have, do you get a constant or not? Right, Matsidiso, can you report back what you've got from your group? We got the constant, say, our constant number is 0, 0,12. 0, 0,12. Yes, sir. That's what you got. Yes. Lady, are you the one who's reporting for the group? Yes, I'm the one that's reporting. Ah. We got a constant from the first recording until the last recording, and our constant is 0, 0,08. 0, 0,08. Eight. Eight. Fine. Uh, let's check the next group. Who's reporting from that group? I am. All right. Komoto? Uh, we didn't get a constant, but be uh, because of that, we had uh, gas escaping from the syringe. For this test to be fair, only the gas's temperature should be altered. The gas's pressure and the amount of gas should be controlled. If gas leaks, the amount of trapped gas changes so it is not controlled. Let's join Nelly and Mr. Mashapa again as they record and analyze the data the learners collected. While Mr. Mashapa takes down the readings from Group 1, can you predict what a graph drawn from these results would look like? Why don't you see if the learners' graphs look like what you predicted? Do you agree that these results should give us a straight line graph? Although the calculations do not give us an exact constant, this could well be due to experimental errors. If you take the average of the answers that the learners got, you should see that it works out to a constant of about 0, 0,12. This confirms that a specific relationship exists between volume and temperature. This relationship is stated in Charles' law, which says that the volume of a fixed mass of gas is directly proportional to its temperature measured in Kelvin, provided that the pressure remains constant. This is the answer to the focus question we started with. How does the temperature of a gas affect its volume? When we ask and answer a question like this, we imply that all other variables are constant. So Charles's law can be written more simply as the volume of the gas is directly proportional to its temperature in Kelvin. We write this mathematically like this. Volume is directly proportional to temperature. This direct proportion causes a graph of volume against temperature to be a straight line. Let's join Mr. Mashapa as he discusses this. What shape did you get there? Hopolang? In our group, we got a straight line graph. Now you got a straight line. Now, does that straight line graph pass through the origin? Yes. If it passes through the origin, then it means that now we can say from a volume temperature relationship, remember careful, your temperature is in Kelvin, our graph is now a straight line. So with you, you got a straight line with a certain gradient, okay? So meaning that now here, volume divided by the temperature gives us a constant. Now, let's look at the constant that you got. Remember you worked out, you got your constant as 0, 0,12. And the other group, you got it as? 0, 0,08. 0, 0,08. 0, 08. So that would mean that now, if this was your graph for 0, 0,12, then obviously the, the other group's graph would also be a straight line, but with a lower slope. Okay, now remember when we started this, we said that now we had two variables being constant. Still remember them? Yes. That was pressure, pressure and, and, the mass. and the mass. Now, 
you worked your experiments under the same pressure. But now, what could be the different now that makes these two graphs to have different slopes? What do you think? Something must have differed in the two uh, experiments. What do you think can it be? The volume. Yes, Letty? I think the mass was different. It means the mass was different. So that is the one that causes the slopes of the two graphs to differ. That is interesting. So one group had more mass trapped in their syringe than the other. Which of these two graph lines belongs to the group which had more gas trapped in their syringe? More gas molecules can push the syringe out for a certain temperature. At a certain temperature, the steeper line has a larger volume than the less steep line, so there is more gas trapped in the syringe in the sample which has a higher K value, and so a steeper gradient. Let's look at group 1's data again. As we've already seen, volume divided by Kelvin temperature gives a constant if we ignore experimental error. In another lesson, we saw that pressure divided by temperature also gives a constant for an enclosed gas at constant volume. This led us to derive this equation, P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. We reason in the same way with this data and get the equation V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Predict, what would the learners have measured the volume to be if they had raised the temperature to 90 degrees Celsius? We first convert the temperature to Kelvin. We add 273. We get 363 Kelvin. We can solve for the unknown value with proportion or with an equation. Let's use the equation. We can use any line of data for the comparison state. Let's use line 4. So we call this T1, this V1, this T2, and the unknown is V2. Since this data has experimental error, you may get slightly different answers if you use any of the other lines for comparison. Here is the question in words. A trapped gas has a volume of 41 centimeters cubed at 349 Kelvin. What is its volume if it is heated to 363 Kelvin? We substitute values into the equation. We cross multiply and we solve for V2. We know the answer's unit is centimeters cubed because that was the unit for V1. In this equation, V1 and V2 must have the same unit as one another, and T1 and T2 must both be in Kelvin. That brings us to the end of this lesson. Don't forget to check out the other videos in this series. Also, remember the task video and the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.